Hi everyone, welcome to the month of March. Today, um, our theme is gender and belonging. So we will be sharing lots of book recommendations, tools, story prompts, and wonderful audio stories for you on this theme. Now this is available to all of our MakerBox members and you can look up peepark.com slash bookstore to find the whole toolkit. And this is a story for the month of March which comes all the way from the village of Golpara in the northeast of India from a place called Assam. And if you're ready, here it goes. Once upon a time, in the village of Golpara in Assam, lived a man and his wife. He was called Jayanath and he was the local priest. His wife was called Jayamala and she was very, very kind. She was honest and hardworking and when she finished all her daily chores, she would sit outside her hut and feed all the animals and birds that met her. She would feed the deers, the birds, the goats, the cows, the stray dogs and even some large animals like the elephants. They all loved Jayamala and they would bring gifts for her. They would bring her jackfruits, bananas pineapples, bamboo shoots, all from the forest. And birds would often come to her, you know, feed on the food she provided and talk with her. Her life was full of love and harmony of living close to the forest and in love with all of the birds and the animals around her. One day, her husband Jayanath was invited to perform the last rites of a very rich man who had passed away in a nearby village and he was a priest so he decided to go and get this job. When he went there he was performing all of the last rites and the woman of the house, um, the mom who had invited him to do the ceremony looked at Jayanath and said, hmm, this could be a nice man who can marry my daughter. Now her daughter was a bit privileged. She had always grown up rich and she felt like she always could get what she wanted. And she was also a bit rude. So no one in her local community wanted to marry her. But Jayanath came from another village and the mother thought, hmm, I must invite him and send him a proposal and get my daughter married to him. So when she sent the proposal to Jayanath and asked him that, will you marry my daughter? I will give you lots of gifts and delicious meals and money and prizes and all kinds of wealth. He immediately told her he was already married and he really loved his wife Jayamala. But this woman didn't want to hear a no. So she tempted him with lots of meals. She gave him gifts and Jayanath became tempted and soon he married this new girl. A few days later, he returned to his hut with his new wife. Now Jayamala was shocked and she was deeply hurt. She didn't know her husband was going to marry again and someone else. So she felt really sad. And then the new bride made a massive mansion next to her hut. And both Jayanath and his new wife, they moved into this big house. While Jayamala was, you know, out living in her small hut. And they asked Jayamala to bring them water from the river every day. They fed her only some dry slices of bread for food. But she fed them to the birds and she didn't eat anything because she was so upset. Every day she would go to the river, sit by the banks and cry. And she told the river. This was so sad. She had made no mistake but she was suffering. And she cried and she cried and she cried. All of the animals, the trees, the herbs... Even the grass started crying for her. One day, the king of the elephants was roaming through the forest and he drank some water at the base of the river. And he found it extremely salty. So he sprayed it all out. And then he spoke to his followers and he said, Why is the water on the top of the hill so sweet? And at the base of the river, it feels so salty. What happened here? So one of his followers said, Hmm, 
about the hill, a beautiful young woman called Jayamala is crying all day because she's very upset. And when her tears mix with the water, it becomes really salty. And of course the king knew Jayamala. He had heard stories of her feeding all of the elephants. So he went on the top of the hill and he met Jayamala and he asked her to tell the story of why she was crying. Jayamala was getting late to go back to her house carrying all the water. But the elephant really, really forced her to tell the story. And then she told them the story of how her husband had found a new wife and they would not treat her well. And she was just sad even though she had done nothing wrong. So the elephant felt really sad for her. But because she was so kind, he said, Jayamala, would you like to be the queen of the elephants? Please come and be our leader. Leave this horrible husband of yours who is not loyal to you and who is so unkind. You are so kind and you have such compassion for all the birds and the animals. We really need you. Jayamala was really surprised. How could she be a leader? And how could she be the leader of elephants, no less? But she did not agree and she said she has to go back and take water to her family. So she couldn't be a leader. But the river was very smart. The river flooded the whole area and took the hut and the big house with it. As a result, all the people in it, they fled because they didn't want to be drowning in the river. And when Jayamala saw it, the king of the elephants took her to his house way up on the hill. And she saw a huge white palace that stood like a cloud on the hills. The king placed Jayamala on the throne and thousands of elephants trumpeted and bowed before her. She looked beautiful and she looked like a true leader. Then the king brought some water of seven colors from seven streams and he poured the water on Jayamala and she turned into an elephant. Trumpeting loudly, all of the elephants, tall, short, small, big, they all bowed to her. And Jayamala, the elephant, was once again so happy. She became the leader of the herd and looked after every member with great kindness and with great care. Even today, in many parts of Assam, you will see herds of elephants which are led by female elephants. They come in the tradition of Jayamala. Now this story was a folk tale that comes all the way from the Northeast. And um, I learned the story from a book called The Folk Tales of the Northeast from Sudha Mahi Raghunathan, whose, um, you know, creates this beautiful set of stories. So if you are interested, that's the book I would love to recommend uh, for this purpose. And for everyone who enjoyed this story, uh, drop us a line. If you know a story about um, a female elephant or a female leader, we would love to hear more. And for our MakerBox members, thank you for your support that makes us create these stories. Have a great March and we will see you in April.